Hi everyone, Emmanuel here. Welcome to another video of Know Your Notes. This time, we're going to talk about the Venn Deformer node, which, alongside the taper, probably will be the most used one to create shapes from primitives. So let's get started. Remember, if you like our videos, you can support the content via Patreon or by buying some of our plugins. The links are in the description. Let's begin by creating a 3D primitive with one side larger than the others. For example, let's set the height to 100 and the width and depth to 10. Finally, increase the number of segments of the height to 50. Now, let's create the bend node and connect it. The first thing we notice is that it only affects the top part of the shape. That happens because the deformer starts always at the pivot point, which in this case is the center of the shape. To make it affect the whole shape, we can either adjust the top and bottom limits, in this case by setting them to minus and plus 50, since the shape has a height of 100, and now it is affecting the whole shape. A better way to fix it will be to create a measure bounding node, that will calculate the max and min point of the shape procedurally. So we create the measure bounding node, Then in the bend node we expose the top and bottom limit and we can connect them. The conversion from vector 3 to float will be added automatically, but we still need to fix the axis that we are using for the size, in this case the y axis. As you can see, now it affects the whole shape again. We could leave it this way, but I usually find it easier if the base of the bend is in the origin. To do that, we can add a basis before the shape. And set the offset to 50. Again, because the shape height is 100. Of course, we can expose the offset and the shape's height to control it procedurally as well, but I think you get the idea. And for this example, this is enough. With the basis added, now the bend starts at the origin and affects all the shape. And believe me, this will become pretty useful in the long run. Now let's check the bend node parameters. The first one is the angle, which basically controls the bend deformation. This angle will bend the shape alongside the axis defined in the basis. If you want to know more about the basis, don't forget to check the previous Nose Your Nose video in this channel. For the bend node, what we need to understand about the basis is that basically the bend will affect the shape on the axis in the middle. In this case, why? and the bend rotation will happen alongside the last axis, while following the right-hand rule, in this case, the C-axis. Now, the right-hand rule means that if you point with your right-hand thumb in the same direction of the rotation axis, in this case, positive C, the bend will occur in the same direction as the one your fingers follow when you bend them. So, for example, in this case, positive angles will go to the left and negatives to the right. Then, we have a direction angle which will add a secondary rotation to the bend, and this rotation will occur in the same axis as the bend deformation, in this case the Y. And as the primary rotation, this one will also follow the right-hand rule. Then we have the limits, top and bottom, that as we have already seen, define where the bend starts and ends. And finally, the deformation type which defines if the bend will deform the geometry or only transform it. This one can be pretty useful for hard surfaces, especially if you plan to do some rigging. As you can see, the bend can be pretty versatile, but its true power comes when you mix it with a basis node. For example, let's create a basis node, set the origin to pivot, and connect it to the bend basis. And nothing happens. But now, if we add a transform node between the basis and the bend, we can use the transform to control the bend even more. For example, let's say that this arch is too wide. We can use the translation to narrow it down. Or if we want to make the arch more oval, we can adjust the scale. 
Or for example, we want to make it more like a U-shape. We can adjust the transform. And also the scale. As you can see, by adding a basis and a transform, you can create a lot of interesting shapes and forms. Especially when working with curves. Or I guess that will be a future video. In the meantime, that's all for now. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.